Um, the first of our speakers for this session is uh, Chris Espinosa, who is um, the general manager for El Pueblo uh, de Los Angeles Historic Monument, which is a major tourist attraction in the heart of uh, Los Angeles. And it, there are over 25 historic buildings uh, and four museums, including the Avia Adobe and America Tropical Interpretive Center as of last week. Uh, and you'll be visiting there later this afternoon. Uh, Chris previously served as the Director of Capital Projects for Los Angeles Mayor Antonio Villaragosa, and Chris has played such an important role uh, in this project. He has been the driving force uh, between the coordination of the city, making sure that, um, that this project really got off the ground and has been followed through to, to the successful opening last week. And, and we've, we're up very, we've very much enjoyed working uh, with Chris um, at the Getty Conservation Institute. And I'd like to welcome him to the stage. Thank you. Good morning. Should I press this? Good morning. Um, my name is Chris Espinosa. I'm the uh, general manager of El Pueblo Historical Monument. And uh, previous to that, I, I work for Mayor Antonio Villabregosa. Um, I'm going to be a, a, a bit casual here. Um, I like to talk about a lot of the kind of challenges that we've had and uh, things that we've overcome in, in order to make this project a success. Um, if, if you know um, Overa Street or El Pueblo, um, you'll know that it's, it's a very contentious uh, location within the city of Los Angeles. It was always known as a place of freedom of speech, of people gathering, of, po of political gatherings, and, um, and so it's a very special place to a lot of people. Uh, the city of Los Angeles uh, had recognized um, the, the, the stakeholders there, the, the merchants there, as being historic resources. So in fact, we have... Um, 40-year uh, concession agreements with the merchants in that area. And as you can see, it's very dense and um, very difficult to get a, a high-profile project like this through. A lot of the stalemate uh, with that uh, lease agreements uh, always made it very difficult over the years to try to get a project like this through because of the footprint. And the footprint would impact various merchants along, that, along the area. And so um, through a lot of negotiation and work and turnover in, in the merchants, we were able to um, get the project up and moving. Um, I want you to also know that um, because um, the project had started early in the 80s and there had been a desire to raise the funds and get the projects through, there had been a number of iterations, design iterations that had occurred over the years. And people had always heard about trying to get this project over the goal line and it just never would get there. And so when we confronted a lot of cynicism at the beginning of the project, um, not only from the Overa Street merchants and other stakeholders in the area, but um, I would even say, I, you know, I had to beg the Getty themselves to get on board again um, because the city of LA hadn't institutionalized the project. So um, uh, it was just a very challenging environment uh, when we started out. In addition to that, um, you have a, a historic environment. It's a very dense urban area, and we receive approximately two million visitors annually. And so um, if you go down to the site, you see um, just tons of tourists and tourist buses, visitors from all over Southern California and locally um, flocking to the site, um, buying little toys for their children or food. And, um, and we encountered a number of uh, both foreseen and unforeseen conditions. Um, when you work with these older buildings, you start digging into the walls and, and you find that uh, some of the buildings don't have proper footings. Um, you find that uh, some of the walls had um, received um, 
fire damage over the years. And so each step of the way as we uh, started to move towards construction, um, it, it was very challenging because you know, the, the high number of change orders that we had to uh, put in place. Um, what you see in the picture uh, above is, is a transfer beam um, that was specially designed and, and our, um, our architect will be speaking of that um, later today. But it was designed specifically to avoid the Zanja Madre, which runs uh, in a diagonal right through Overa Street and is another beautiful historic resource that we, we take very seriously in the city of Los Angeles. So we, we designed um, this transfer beam to avoid uh, impacting it. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to Jesus Trevino and, uh, and it means a, a great deal to me to hear his perspective. Um, you know, I uh, grew up in the 80s, but uh, with a strong sense of um, um, pride in, in uh, being Mexican-American and Chicano. And so um, when I got the opportunity to start working on this project, um, it involved a lot of outreach. Um, and as you can tell, there was a lot of participation over the years. Uh, Schiffer Goldman, Jesus Trevino, uh, all these uh, great artists, you know, uh, Judy Bach, um, Barbara Carrasco, and all these great uh, Los Angeles muralists. And, you know, you, the, the weight on your shoulders to try to get people moving in a positive direction to really believe that we can get this project through uh, was, a, was a heavy burden. Um, but I, I want you to know that um, I think we, I, I think as a team, we believe so strongly in the type of work that had been conducted to date and that type of history and that type of effort in those early years that, that strove us forward. And once people started to believe and see the different milestones that we started to achieve, um, you started to see people just really accepting um, the design, um, how we were moving forward. And um, as we started to go from commission to commission, you know, the Historical Planning Commission, the Cultural Affairs Commission, the El Pueblo Commission, um, a lot of public outreach, you started to see the excitement building and building and people starting to really believe that it was gonna happen after 30 years. But um, one, one of the strange things that was always occurring to me was that I, I just felt that the, the project itself, the artistic content itself, it just felt strange that the Getty and the city of Los Angeles would be working on such a thing. Uh, the, the Los Angeles Times in an editorial, uh, I think, captured that the irony that here are two institutions, um, you know, a capitalist, <laughs> you know, raised with, with this large endowment, um, and, and the city of Los Angeles championing freedom of speech, uh, championing this great artwork with this very um, um, controversial political content. And, um, and so it was kind of, and I grew up in the punk rock movement, you know, so it just always felt strange that I was coming from the city of Los Angeles and, and working on a project like this, trying to institutionalize it. Um, but, you know, it was really that Chicano activism and um, a mayor who, was very active in the Chicano movement in his days at UCLA, uh, Mayor Villaregosa, who, who really believed in the project as well. He was a former council member in the 14th district that encompasses El Pueblo. And so um, at, at that point, people really started to believe and, and feel that, um, that the political might was behind it. Um, and, and really, um, all we did was just kind of grab the project and, and put it into the river of bureaucracy to really institutionalize it. Uh, for a long time, the project kind of um, was floating out there. Um, and although there was money from the Getty, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of projects in the city of Los Angeles. And um, it always, you always have to grab that project and really put it and move it through the system. Um, because there's so many and competing interests that um, you really have to drive it. And so we put together a team uh, of very dedicated individuals who, who believed in it, and, and then from that point on, we started moving it. Um, I, I was also the mayor's appointee to the Municipal Facilities Committee, and that's a, 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 
a committee of administrators, internal administrators, uh, budgetary, legislative, and executive that um, is able, and, and nobody knows really about this committee in the, in the city of Los Angeles, so, but, but that's how you really drive things. And so by being uh, the mayor's appointee on that committee, um, you could oversee the budget, you could oversee the schedule, you could make sure that the right team was in place, and uh, that really pushed it forward. I also want you to know that um, the El Pueblo Capital Program has been very robust over the years. We've um, uh, renovated all the center puestos to a historic standard. Um, we've um, uh, renovated the Methodist Church. Um, we've put in new sidewalks and trees. We have the Siqueros project that we've just completed. And then uh, right after this, we're gonna start uh, doing some work on the Italian Hall which we're very excited about. And we have some other projects in mind. So this is just, um, this, this project that you see right now that you're gonna come over to today, you're really gonna enjoy it, but you're also just, you're also gonna see a lot of new projects coming through at El Pueblo. And it really shows, you know, our belief and importance of the historical um, significance of this location. And so um, I'd just like to thank you. Uh, this is one of our friends, Lazaro. Um, blessing our um, protective shelter. Thank you. <laughs>